Hello folks, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen wishing you a very happy Friday. It is Friday here in Sydney, so Friday in our household normally means fish, fish Friday. So I thought I'd actually do a little class with you guys and I'll be cooking some fish. Now the type of fish that I'm making is something that we all know well, especially for those of us who have children, you might even know it better than some of some of um, other people who, who um, maybe don't go to the supermarket and go to the fish finger section of the freezer. <laughs> so what, what I thought I'd do with you guys today, it is a delicious easy recipe. Yes, it's great for kids, but it really is for the, the big kid in all of us because we are going to be using a good quality white fish. So we're using a fresh pit, bit of fish. We're gonna be crumbing it ourselves and then we're gonna be cooking it and what can get healthier than that? Because reason why I'm doing fish today as well as it's Friday and it's fish Friday um, but the other reason I'm doing fish is I really want to sort of get over this bit of information about how good fish is for our body because I know that there's quite a few of us that definitely don't eat enough of it for some it's more of a flavor thing um, you might find that this is actually a nice way to get a bit of fish into your diet because it's like you're having a little crumb you know little crumb goodie um, but the reasons why fish is so important and why I have fish appearing in both the cookbooks. So the recipe I'm doing today, which is my healthiest fish fingers, is actually in the new book, More From Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, which we, I think we launched this last Sunday. So it's only brand new. If you haven't got your copy, that's because it is still on pre-sale and we're expecting delivery in the next couple of weeks. So you're gonna be getting this pretty soon. So this is a hundred more of my gut healthy recipes. And the fish fingers that we're doing today is actually on page 81. I want to show you the photo because it's actually one of my favorite photos from the photo shoot that we did uh, for this, this book. It was about four days of the photo shoots. But this is what we're doing today. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? So delicious, right? You're like, nah, that's not healthy. That looks like it's probably been deep fried as well. I bet that's what you're thinking. It's on page 81 of the book. Page 81 of the new book. If you want to get your order in now for pre-sales, I believe we're still giving away. Um, we're still give, are, are we still giving away at that little gift, Mahi? We are. I just got the big thumbs up from behind the computer screen. We are still giving away, if you order your copy of More From Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, by going to morefrombridget.com. That is the website you go to, morefrombridget.com. You will get a copy. The first 500 people will get a copy of my soon-to-be-released e-cookbook, Bridget's Healthy Breads and Pastries with 30 recipes for healthy breads, healthy pastries, healthy banana breads, healthy all sorts of delicious stuff. If you order your book now, you're going to get a free copy of that emailed to you the minute it goes live. So that is um, what we're doing today. It's straight from the book, page 81. Very exciting. But as well as um, what I have here, because what you're saying, fish is really, really good for us. I have a huge section in the book. I have a huge section in the book. It's the blue section, as you can see there, the blue section on the on the um, on the side there. The blue section is all the seafood because fish is so good for us. In fact, if you um, have a copy of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, um, which is the first book, which is the first book, and yes, it's still available as well. You can go to Bridget'sCookbook.com and get yourself a copy of this one, and you can get that now because that I have copies here in Sydney that I can send out to you and you're probably gonna be waiting about a week for it to come through the post. Um, if you have a look at this book, you will also notice that I have quite an extensive range of different types of seafood because it is so good for us in different types of fish. So the reason why I love fish and because I love the taste as well, so I'm one of those people who just would eat fish every day if I could, but it's also extremely low in calories. So not only does it taste good, but it's really, really low in calories. So being low in calories means it's really good for weight loss, which is fantastic. So low in cal calories, thank you fish, which is wonderful. But it's also a source of high quality protein. And as we all know, protein is what helps our cells and our muscles to repair. So we have to have protein in our diet and fish is a really good source of high quality protein. It is also really, really easy to digest. So if you think about the fibers of fish, they break away quite easy. So it's not hard for your gut to work through it. So it's a really good, um, really good ingredient to have or, or something, you know, a dish to eat if you're looking at it from a gut health perspective as well. It's really, really, really good for our gut. It has healthy fats in it. Healthy, healthy fats, which are really good for our brain health. And it's also really rich in iodine. Now, iodine is also why I love 
seaweed, because seaweed's really high in iodine as well. And iodine, remember, helps to regulate our thyroid. So it keeps our metabolism kicking over. So if we're looking at this, eating more fish, purely from a weight loss perspective, you seriously cannot go wrong. It is fabulous. And I have recipes in here. And of course, I have lots and lots of fish recipes in here too. And this, like I said, this is a nice one to kind of, if you're like, not really sure whether you want to do the fish thing, it's a nice one to introduce yourself to eating a bit of fish, definitely for the kids. In fact, this is a great recipe to make with the kids. If they're part of that process, you'll be getting healthy food in them to, into them as well. And for them, they're just eating fish fingers, which is really cool. So let's start, start the cooking. Let's get down here. So I'll bring it down to the bench so you can see what's happening. Now, by the way, you might notice this. <laughs> this is a, um, I went paddle boarding this morning and that is a paddle board injury. <laughs> so um, it is on my right hand so it's going to be it's, it's my little finger I think I may have fractured it but that's okay so I've got a little bit of, of, of strapping tape on it now so I'm not gonna you know if, if you hear me go ooh, halfway through the class you know that I may have hit my little pinky there so um bear with me I don't know what it's gonna be like chopping without the use of two fingers but we'll see how we go it's all gonna it all makes sense <laughs> It'll all make sense. And hi to Chantel. Yes, you've made a live, my love. Thank you for joining me. Please, guys, let me know where you're coming from. Let me know where you're currently at. Say hi. And please, if you've got any questions as we're going throughout the class, ask away. Mahe is here to let me know if we've got any questions. Right. So let's get into it because I talk too much once again. Let's start with our healthy fish fingers. So the first thing you'll notice is I have my fish here and it really is up to you what type of fish you use. Now I'm using a white fish, there's two types of varieties of fish if we break them down into categories. There's white fish which is obviously white fillets like this and then there is oily fish. Now oily fish is made up of salmon, it's made up of tuna as well, um, sardines can sit in there, some types of sardines but mainly salmon and tuna um, are our oily fish and our white fish has hundreds of different types of whitefish fillets that you can use. Now, it's up to you as I was saying, it depends what's available, and you don't necessarily have to go for fresh, because I know it can be a bit expensive. You can buy frozen, and just let your fillet defrost naturally overnight in the refrigerator. Do not pop that in the microwave to defrost, because it will start to cook. The best way to defrost your fillets, if you are using frozen fish, and then you're defrosting it, because obviously that's definitely um, better, for, you know, better for the budget, is to do it overnight, just put them onto a plate, pop them in the fridge, cover them with a bit of cling film onto the, into the bottom of the fridge and let them very, very gently defrost overnight. And then you won't get them all waterlogged um, if you were to try and do it really, really quick. So you can use fresh, you can absolutely use frozen, and it doesn't matter which fillet you use. For example, um, this is a little bit of perch, sea perch, but you could also use cod. You want it to be quite firm, so you don't want it to break up because we're going to be making fingers. You could use snapper, you could use gurnard, you could use uh, barramundi, whatever your budget will allow. I do find that um, the New Zealand hokey tends to be a little bit too flaky for this, so you might want to stay away from hokey. But if you've got a nice big piece of hokey, you, that might work as well. I'll leave it up to you. If you don't like fish to be too fishy, um, then you might want to go for something like a mild fish, like a, in New Zealand a um, tarakihi is a very mild flavoured fish, you might want to go for something like that. And here in Australia it tends to be the perches and the cods which are quite mild flavoured too. So we're going to take up our fillet, we're going to eye it up or size it up so to speak, and then <laughs> I'm not sure how, like I said, not sure how this cutting business is going to work today. It's going to be really fun. Oh, and hi to Rachel coming to us from Ohio. What time is it in Ohio, Rachel? It must be about nine o'clock at night, something like that. Oh, and we've got Connie just down the road in Cogra. Thanks for joining us, Connie. All right, we're going to make fingers with a couple of fingers that I can't use. So I'm, like I said, I don't know how this is going to work, but what I'm doing is I'm sizing up the fillet. So I'm just cutting down the middle of it, just like that. And then, thinking about how long fingers are, I'm going to make a couple of incision uh, cuts here onto and um, with the fillets. Put that to the side. Kind of even sized if you can manage it. You know, you kind of want your fingers to be all of a of a fairly similar size. Just like can you guys see that. So they're kind of all quite even sized. And then taking one piece, we're just going to make once again as even 
size slices as possible. And the reason we're doing them, the cat just smelt the fish and she just jumped off the couch. <laughs> I can see her coming towards me. Now the reason we're doing even sized um, fingers is we want them to cook evenly. If I had big pieces and small pieces and I threw them all in um, together at the same time to cook, you'll get some that would be overcooked and some that would be undercooked. So the best way to do it is just to try and get it as even sized as possible. You might find you've got a little bit of, um, you've got a few off cuts, don't throw those away. They can just be fried up in a little pan or thrown into your air fryer with a bit of sticky sauce and gone into a salad. So don't throw your off cuts away by, no need to do that. But we're gonna have this type of finger, yeah? Something like that, about that size, literally, finger size. So once you've got them to this stage, I'm just gonna set them aside. You can see I can make quite a few out of these. And I got this on special, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna make quite a few fish fingers. So now I've got them to that point, I wanna think about the crumb, because the crumb is what tends to be the unhealthy part if you're buying your fish fingers pre-made already in the supermarket, in the frozen section. We're gonna make our own today. It's really easy to do. I've got my little machine here, my little food processor, and I'm gonna start with a base of rice cakes. You know those tasteless, awful rice cakey things? Well, guess what? They are good for something. <laughs> They're good for making a crumb for your fish or a crumb for your chicken or whatever it might be where you want to create a crumb, break up some of those into your little food processor machine, turn it on very quickly. Give it a little bit of a whirl and look at that. We've got a, we've got a big piece, so I just might take that out. But that's kind of what you're after, yeah? Looks like breadcrumbs, but of course it's rice, rice cake crumbs. So um, they, like I said, flavor, mm, missing the flavor train a little bit, but definitely have the right texture, which we're after. And of course now these fish fingers are gluten free, which is very important that we don't want to add any gluten to our fish fingers either. So that's done. We now are going to add, in here I have, um, some psyllium husks. Now psyllium husks are, are, are dietary fiber. They also do thicken things as well and they help things to adhere. But because they're a dietary fiber, remember I said these are the healthiest fish fingers in the world. In the world, there you go, 10, 16 in Ohio, PM. Thank you for joining us, having a little late night cooking class. <laughs> so psyllium husks, gonna add some dietary fiber to our food. Remember, nice and healthy dietary fiber helps to keep us regular helps to keep us feeling fuller longer as well. So the dietary fiber is gonna go in there. Not too much of a flavor, I have to say, with that one, it's kind of like, yeah, not really a flavor, but it is gonna add dietary fiber, which is good. It's gonna help our, our um, rice crumbs to adhere to the fish as well. A Little bit of salt goes in there, a little bit of a pinch of Himalayan salt. Remember, we're trying to add a little bit of flavor to our food. You could, if you wanted to, this is up to you, just a little bit of finely um, ground black pepper in there, just for once again, a little bit more flavor. And this is an option, this is not in the book, so this is not part of the recipe, which is in here. I've given you um, the recipe, page 81, once you get your book, Bridget's Fish Fingers. But it's actually a nice little um, addition, if you want to, you don't have to do this, it's completely up to you. I'm gonna take a little bit of nutritional yeast, now nutritional yeast, very high in B vitamins, has a wonderful flavor and that's why I'm adding it. So just a teaspoon of nutritional yeast is gonna go in there. But like I said, you don't have to add this if you don't want to, but it just helps to give our crumb just even more delicious flavor, which is great. So that is in there. I'm gonna give it one last little bash. I'll see if I can even add that in. Don't wanna waste anything. One more little bash. See how we go. Done. Easy, right? I love it. I love stuff that's easy. Take up a bowl. This is going to be one of our little um, bowls that we're going to use when we start to crumb our fish fingers. So we're going to have a cup, set up a couple of bowls. One of them is going to be with the crumbing mixture there, which is looking very, very good. And I've got big pieces and small pieces, so it's going to be quite rustic. <laughs> Rustic's the word you use. When it doesn't look really, really smooth, everything's rustic, and this is a rustic crumb mixture. You could take it a bit further if you wanted to. You could actually leave it in your processor a little bit longer and just make it look all a bit more. But I actually quite like the, the different textures in the crumb. I just think it just looks, it just looks more yummy up, if you know what I mean. Now in the other bowl, we're going to add an egg, but I only want the egg white. So once again, 
we're adding protein. We don't need the egg yolk, but we are going to keep it. I'm not going to throw it away, but I'm just going to put it to the side because once again, we can put that egg yolk into something else. Did you see how easy it is? If you, if you don't, if you're not confident by um, separating eggs, that is the way that I've always done it and the way that I find most simplest. And when I used to work as head chef for Bill Granger many, many, many years ago in Sydney, I used to have to do this, and this is exactly the method I did, but I would do it probably a hundred times a day. So because I've done it so many times, I do know that this is the best way to do it. So you crack it down the middle. You, uh, you pull the shells apart as evenly as possible, and then you just allow the white to just drop down. Now I'm going to transfer the yolk from one shell to the next. Transfer the yolk like that. And as I'm transferring the yolk, the white continues to just come away so that all I'm left with in there is the yolk, which is fantastic. Now, if you find that you get a little bit of yolk in here, that's okay. Don't freak out. We're not making pavlova. If we're making pavlova, I'll definitely say that you need to rescue the yolk from the white. But if you do and you don't want to have any yolk in there, take part of the eggshell and just put it into the white. And what you will find is that the yolk is attracted to the eggshell and just whoop, go straight in there. It's also a really good trick if you have eggshell that goes into here. Take a little bit of this eggshell, put it in, you'll find the eggshell is attracted to the eggshell and then you can easily just throw it away. So great little tip. And like I said, I've been using these, these sort of tips for many, many, many years as a chef. I know they work. They work really well. So our egg whites in there, just give it a little bit of whisking. Oh, whisking's hard. Hang on, let me try. I'm just gonna change hand positions. Just a little bit, nothing too major. Just want to break it up a little bit so it, st it evenly sticks to the uh, to the crumbs or to the fish and then the crumbs. Now, if you did not want to use egg white here, you could also use just plain water, cold water. Yeah, you don't have to use egg white if you really are wanting to to keep the calories down in this dish. Then, by all means, just use water here instead of egg white. All right. All we're going to do now is do the crumb part. This is the fun part, right? Okay, so, taking up a finger. <laughs> Let me just I'm put that there because I want to use this bowl. It always pays up to set up your bowls. One, two, and three, the way that we're going to crumb. Now, traditionally, you start with flour, and then you move on to egg, and then you finish with your crumbs. But we don't have any flour, so we're going to go straight on to um, the first step for us is just running it through, obviously with clean fingers, running it through the egg white, and then just popping it in here and give it a little bit of a tap, just a gentle tap, and that tap is gonna help to stick. Do you see that? You could, even if you really want to, you can double dip. If you wanna have a really, really thick crumb on the outside, you can absolutely double dip as well. It gets messy, guys. This is why this is a fun job for the kids to do. And you know, it does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it because, well, not that much time. I'm doing it, oops, I'm doing it in front of you. Look, I've already made a mess. I'm doing it in front of you guys, you know, to order. So it doesn't take that much time. You could if you wanted to, um, as I said, double dip, which is, means you're just gonna get messy, messy, even more messy, but that's nothing wrong with that. But you could also just rest these in the, um, in the fridge for a little bit to help the crumbs to stick. Up to you. Let's try two at the same time. How about that? Oh, just throwing caution to the wind now. I'm getting confident with my with my two less fingers. <laughs> it's going to make an interesting weekend because I've got a lot of testing in the kitchen plan. It's going to be very interesting. Me attempting to cook with a couple of fingers that just don't want to work. But there, you, there you go. What can you do? As my husband was saying, it's good that you shows that you're only human. And, uh, and even with a slight injury, it's not major, but let's be honest, but even with a slight injury, we can still get in there and cook something healthy and something delicious, which is what's important. All right, so just popping all those down there, giving it a nice little pat, and then all we have to do is pop them into the air fryer. So I've got my air fryer on. It's been preheating actually for quite some time. Let me just clean off the crumbs off the fingers. It's been preheating for quite a bit of time. Um, but I only actually need the um, fish fingers to be in there for about seven minutes. Now I've set it at 180. Let me just pop that up so you guys can see. I've set it at 180. And as I was saying, these fish fingers only need, and I'm not doing anything. I'm not spraying them with oil. I'm doing none of those things. They're literally going straight in. 
and I'm putting them onto a little wire rack that I have in there just so it elevates them. You want the air to flow underneath them. So if your air fryer comes with a wire rack, definitely put your fish fingers on there. Or if your air fryer comes with a basket with holes, there's no need for paper to line it with baking paper. Just pop them in and get them going. So I'm gonna close the lid now and we're set for seven minutes. Seven minutes time, we should have some delicious, delicious little fish fingers. And as I was saying, um, definitely put them onto the wire rack and the other little trick when it comes to air fryers something that you guys need to keep a, a bit of an eye out for is when it comes to air fryers the best thing best way to add food into your air fryer is to keep everything in a single layer so you don't sort of put things on top of each other because what you'll find is they don't cook very evenly and we want these to cook as evenly as possible so I've got them on that wire rack and I've also made sure that they are in a single layer they're not quite touching each other either so they've just got a little gap in between um, just so they get that air flowing all around the fish fingers uh, making it a nice even cook as well now you can do these in the oven so you'd set your oven on 180 um, but you'd need to probably line a roasting tray with baking paper and then they go onto the baking paper now they're not going to get as crisp as the air fryer does but you're still going to get a pretty decent result um, and what someone's just asked what brand is my air fryer my air fryer um, uh, the brand I don't actually know what the brand is <laughs> healthy something or other I can't even read it but I can tell you that I bought this here in Australia, I bought it online through kogan.com.au. It cost $110, um, plus I think delivery was 10 bucks as well. And it is a 10 liter air fryer. I can put a whole chicken into here and use it as a rotisserie. And that's the thing I wanna show you guys very quickly before I get onto the very last part of this while our fish fingers cook. One of the things I've added to this book, and this is why this book is so cool and I cannot wait for you guys to get it. So page 81, I'm moving to, which is our fish fingers. The other super cool thing about this book is I have down there, you see that little thing there? That is known as a QR code. And if you were to scan that, your, that QR code, and there's 50 of these QR codes in the book, if you are to scan that QR code, either usually with your phone, you can download a QR reader. Some phones you can actually just like you're taking a photo and the link will pop up. You click on that link and that will take you to a video of me showing you more air fryer tips. Because this is an air fryer recipe, it sends you to a video where you get all my air fryer tips. How cool is that? That is like awesome, right? And there's 50 of those in this book, including me actually cooking the recipes or shopping tips or preparation tips or whatever it is, they're all in this book. 50 QR codes, um, as far as I'm aware, we are the only cookbook currently in the world who has that technology. Yay, we're the only ones, and then you're gonna be the first one to have, you're gonna be the first one to have it in your house as well. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, so. That is there. I thought I would finish off this dish. Um, and once again, you can serve your fish fingers with, you know, vegetables, or maybe you want to do some sweet potato fries done in here, or some zucchini chips done in here. Completely up to you how you serve your fish fingers. I thought I would just make a little kind of a cheats tartia sauce, because as we know, fish and tartia sauce go pretty good together. And we're gonna make a healthy one, of course. So um, I'm making this up on the spot. Literally, I looked at my fridge and went, oh, let's make some tartia sauce. So you guys are the first in the world to um, have access to this recipe. We'll see how it goes. I'm making my tartia sauce with some coconut yogurt because I am dairy free. This coconut yogurt is just an unsweetened version. Absolutely delicious. If you are near an Aldi in Australia, you can buy this at Aldi and I find it's quite cheap as well. But in saying that, um, Coles do a pretty good coconut unsweetened coconut yogurt as well. So you can go there, but I like this one from Aldi. Look how thick it is. It's gorgeous. So a couple of tablespoons of our coconut yogurt goes in. That's going to be my base. And it's got a little bit of a tang to it. And you kind of want that when it comes to fish, right? You want a little bit of acid in there. That's why we always do lemon, um, you know, on our fish and chips and stuff. So I've, I've got a little bit of lemon. In fact, I've got a lot of lemon. And I've been slowly trying to work my way to using up this lemon because it's so huge. But I just need a little bit of lemon juice. Cutting's really. <laughs> I feel a little bit unco today when I'm cutting, but never mind. Just a little bit of lemon juice is going to go in there. So I'm going to squeeze it with my left hand because I don't think I can squeeze with my right. 
at the moment. So a couple of, and look how much juice you get out of these lemons. Someone gave them to me and I still just adore them. I'm, I'm gonna have to contact her and see if I can get some more because they're amazing. All right, a little bit of lemon juice goes in there. I'm also going to add in a little bit of, and you can add chopped parsley, you could add some chopped mint. Like I said, it's not a real tartare sauce, it's just gonna be, oop, you can tell my chopping's off. Look at that. That was me trying to chop before. Mm. <laughs> Oops, throw him away. I'm just, I just want the parts that are actually chopped. You can use parsley, dill, mint, basil, any type of fresh herb, coriander, any of those that you like can go on there just to give it a little bit more of a flavor. I'm gonna add in some salt. I'm also gonna add in some black pepper. Just a little bit of black pepper is going in there. And the last thing I'm gonna add, I have to grab it from the fridge because I forgot to put it on the bench. One second. Ta-da! These are my pickled cucumbers. They are, you can find the recipe in uh, the first book, Bridges Healthy Kitchen. It's at the back, I believe. I'm just gonna see if I can find it up for you guys who are playing along at home. It is in the foundation part of the book, foundation recipes. So these are my healthy pickles that I always have, right? Always, always, always have them. And here they are. So, pickled cucumbers. Ooh. I'm gonna be adding pickled cucumbers. I forgot what page it was now. <laughs> I'm gonna add pickled cucumbers to mine. Just a couple of pickled cucumbers, or even maybe one, just cut, well, chopped fairly thinly. I don't know how, how that's going to work today, but I'm going to do my best. Remember, every time you go into your pickle jar, whether they're onions, cucumbers, ginger, whatever, make sure you go in with a clean utensil, because that's going to make sure that your pickles last even longer. And you go in with a clean utensil every time. All right, pickles. Okay, bear with me. I'm pulling up my sleeves and I attempt to... Ah. All right, I might have to go and get that checked out in the hospital. Oh, it's sleeping! Oh, excitement, shush. I, I'm just gonna put you on, have a little look. Oh, it needs a little bit longer. I'm gonna just put, add a little bit longer to it, a little bit more time. I think it was only on six minutes and it should have been seven to eight minutes. So, let's add more time. There we go. And she's off. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna attempt to cut these as small as possible. You want them in little pieces, just so it kind of, oh yeah, I'm kind of, kind of working. So it kind of like that, like that sort of size. So um, you know when you're having your little your little healthy tartare style, style sauce, you're getting these wonderful bits of pickled cucumber through there. So we've got a bit of acid. We've got the, the you know the, the healthy fat from the coconut yogurt. We've got a bit of lemon in there. We've got some fresh herbs, salt and pepper. Give it a little bit of, of a stir. Yum yum yum. Really important. I know it kind of looks like a tartare sauce, right? A nice thick one. Got to have a bit of a taste too. 100%. Got to see what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could just eat that. I could just eat that on its own. Oh my god. That is really good. Do you guys take that, the instructions down on how I made that? That is amazing. Like literally, that's created in front of your eyes. I had no idea whether that was going to work. It is really, really good. That is my um, coconut uh, coconut tartia with pickled cucumbers. Wow, fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, enough excitement. Move that to the side. Let's take a look under the hood. Let's see what's happening. Give my bench a bit of a wipe down. Right, the moment of truth. The big reveal, come closer, little air fryer. It's actually quite huge, see it's got a glass thing too so you can see what's going on inside. It is awesome, I love it, don't get me wrong. If you had to ask me what is my favorite bit of kitchen equipment, I'm currently in love with the air fryers. I'm not particular about brands, I think this one could do a better job, but it is a very good size and it works really, really well. So, good for my size family. Here we go. Okay, so, ooh. I wonder if I can do that without burning me little fingers. Well, after, you know, I think we're still a couple minutes away, but you can already see we've got a nice little, quick, can you hear it? Nice little crispy, crunchy texture. We could do with a little bit more color. So I could leave them in there a little bit longer just to get that color, like maybe for one more minute longer. But you know, this is the whole idea. You, know, you open it up, take a look inside, see what's happening. And then you go, you know what? I'm gonna leave it for one minute longer just to give it a little bit more color. Completely up to you. but. For the sake of our video today, I'm gonna to finish it off, play it up for you guys, 
So you see how, how it all comes together. Check this out. How cute are these? I think I bought these from Target or something like that. I just thought, these are so cute. A little bit of baking paper. You know, feed this to the kids. They're going to be like, yes, that looks delicious. And you know they're going to absolutely smash the entire thing. So we're taking our fish fingers out. Remember, fish doesn't need very long. So that's six minutes in there. Look at that. And nice and crunchy. That's all it needs. Then we can just layer them in our little, our little tray. Can you guys see? Layer them in our little tray. You could, of course, create, you know, this is kind of snacky, but there is nothing stopping you from creating dinner out of this. It depends what you serve with it, right? So I'm just going to see, oh, the smell coming off it is wonderful. It really is quite good. So um, I'm going to put them in there. I'm just going to take a little bit. I've got this real fancy sea salt. It's called pyramid salt. Very fancy. Nice little flavor. That's going to go in there as well. You know what else you could do? You could chop up some nori, you know, like what you use to make sushi. Chop it up real thin and sprinkle it over. That'll be really, really nice. But we, of course, made our own cutie little delicious coconut tartia sauce. We're going to just pop in there. That is going to be our dip on top of our, um, for our little fish fingers. You know, if it's kids, maybe they're, they're going mm -mm, about the tartia, but you could totally now serve this to adults, right? This now becomes adult-fied because you've added the tartia, that really cool tartia. And everything, of course, is gluten-free, it's sugar-free, it is dairy-free, and um, if you wanted to not even add egg, it can be egg-free as well, just by using water to dip it with. Let's finish it off with my lovely, my lovely bit of homegrown lemons. These lemons are so good. I'm addicted to eating the peel. I just munch on the peel. I think it's wonderful. It's so, so sweet. But we need just a nice little, a nice little um, wedge of our lemon. Oh, look, it's so, there's, there's, so, there's so much peel. Look how much peel there is. I'm going to have to try and create another wedge. That was just all peel. That's why I'm eating it. It's so yummy. So, so good. All right, here we go. Without losing another finger, let's throw that in there. Let's pop that in there like that. And there you have, how good does that look? Huh? <laughs> you, who, you could put that in front of, like I said, little kids, maybe minus the, the, the coconut yogurt um, little tartia, but you can put this in front of kids. You can put this in front of adults. And I don't know any adult alive that wouldn't dig into that straight away. Good footy food too. Anyone who's watching, well, there's no Rugby World Cup this weekend because of the typhoon, but good footy food, good snack food, great recipe to make with the kids as well. And of course, add vegetables in a salad and you turn it into a main meal as well. But it's just wonderful. And yes, it is to be found in the cookbook, page 81. And we're hoping to get these cookbooks to get starting to get delivered in the next couple of weeks. If you have pre-ordered your cookbook, expect keep an eye keep an eye on your mailbox in the next couple of weeks um because we're hoping to get that to you guys really soon i've got one more question before i go yes mahi uh veronica missed the name of the fish what ah the name? fish i was using there was um a little bit of perch but it's up to you veronica what fish you use so you can use perch you can use snapper you can use gurnard you can use terakee you can use i mean you could use salmon if you really wanted to but um i think the white fish is just better when it comes to fish fingers don't you you decide, barramundi, whatever you want, can go into here, just make sure it's quite firm. So you want a nice firm fish so that the actual fingers hold together and look like fish fingers, right? So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that little video. And I will try and do more videos over the, over the weekend because we've got, I've got lots and lots of cooking that I'm testing. And I just hope that that holds up too so that <laughs> I can get some more videos to you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us. If you've already bought your cookbook, thank you to all those hundreds and hundreds of people that have already bought a cookbook. If you haven't bought a cookbook, you can still buy it at morefrombridget.com. And of course, this is still available and there's lots of gorgeous seafood recipes in there. And all you have to do is go to Bridget's Kitchen. No. What was the first book website, mate? I've forgotten. Bridget'sCookbook.com yeah. is the yellow book, the first one, the gut reset. Morefrombridget.com is the new one. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will talk to you all really soon. Take care. Bye.